Good morning, everyone. I'm Wei Tan, a senior lecturer from Queen Mary. Today, I would I will briefly touch upon the shape morphing structures. One of the key questions we want to address is: if you are given a desired three D shape, how are you going to inversely design? The original 2D flat sheet. So here we're going to show you some novel developments from our group. Before I dive into details, I will firstly thank my students and my collaborators for their excellent contributions. Let me start with the motivations. Why we need morphing structures? Shape morphing structures have the ability to change their shape from one to another can offer an enormous potential to uh, many applications. For example, they can be used for deployable structures for space applications. You can also use it for enhanced aerodynamic performance of aircraft wings. Furthermore, you can use them for achieve precise motions in soft robots. So how are we going to achieve morphing? The remaining candidate morphing structures, for example, shape more shape memory alloys, pneumatic structures or hydraulic structures. Here I will present some very simple structures that can transform from flat 2D shade to 3D shapes due to their simplicity in fabrications and transportations that they can be transported while stacking. A uh, classic example here is to morph a 2D flat fabric to the 3D shapes. But as you can see, if you want to achieve that, you will cause severe wrinklings. Why is that? Because you generate a changing of Gaussian curvature. Gaussian curvature characterizes the curvature of the shapes. Typically, you cannot change it by simply draping the, sh the structure. In the literature, people try to achieve this morphing where different methods, one of the methods do is to use local expansions through actuations, for example, the pneumatic expansions or thermal expansions. But this will introduce large strain locally, which is not desirable for something like variable electronics. Another way to achieve that is using the so-called kirigami structures, where you cut the flat sheet in a specific locations, then applying external load or stimuli, you can achieve the 3D shapes. So basically, this is a axisymmetric type of structures that you can easily make using like laser cutting. So now the question is, how do we determine the 2D cut patterns? that deform into a desired 3D shapes. It is easy to achieve it by just trying to error the so-called forward design method. However, ideally we want to use an inverse design method. For example, you want to have a hemispherical shapes. How are you going to cut the 2D flat sheet to achieve that? You can achieve that by analytical solutions or data-driven approach. Let's move into our method. Let's start with the simple beam problems. We can simplify these axiometric problems into a 1D beam problem. Simply cut it. So if you look at the cross-section of these structures, it simply is a, just a 1D beam. By applying transfers or auto plan direction loading, you can introduce beam bucklings. So, how do we derive the equations for that? 
we use these classic tapered beam equations. This equation is derived from a long linear beam theory. Look at the equations. On the left, you can see some classic, very familiar terms in your solid mechanics module, where you can see Young's modulus, second moment area, and the, the shape of that structures. On the right, basically, is the loading, how you apply the loading, either transverse loading or vertical loadings. So I is the second moment area here. To achieve a control of that buckling, we can control the local beam bending stiffness by varying the moment of inertia or the local Young's modulus. You, you, as you know, the width and the thickness will determine the moment of inertia. So this is the first things we're trying to do. Our previous work basically is using uniform thickness and tensorlations to achieve that. The target shape is simply the coupler of St. Thomas Church. At the beginning, we achieved that by simply applying horizontal force and assume uniform thickness without any tensorlation. Using that equations, basically, we vary the width of our petals and you can see there's a significant gaps between each petals although the curvature is very close to the target shape then we so somehow want to relax the boundary conditions where we ensure there was a tensorlation conditions where the adjacent petals must match and then we allow the thickness be a variables so the thickness can be changed by doing that we can achieve this perfect match edge basically tensorlation but at the same time the thickness of the petal varies across the longitudinal directions however structure with varying thickness are difficult to store and typically is incompatible with brittle materials and then we're trying to develop something different by using distributed local porosities. In that case, basically, we vary the materials across the petals, essentially by cutting the petals and remove some materials. We can still achieve such conditions. However, size of porosity may somehow adversely affect the load bearing capacity of the morphing structures. So our work basically is trying to vary the modulus by using the graded beam where we want to achieve a modulus gradings across the beams. And this equation basically characterizes that relationship between the Young's modulus and also the material in terms of different width and also their curvatures. And as we know the final 3D shapes, though we know that they and the width profile is already determined, and then we can inverse design our Young's modulus profile in such a scenario. But how do we achieve Young's modulus gradings? One way to achieve this is using biphase composites. And then there's two questions we want to answer. How to determine the composition of each material? We have a rigid material and a solid material, a soft material. How we vary the composition between them? And secondly, how do we fabricate the graded composites? One way we can achieve that is using voxelated graded composite. Our strategy involves discretizing the geometry using the voxels. As you can see from the figures, we can discretize the whole structure in many slides. At the particular slides, like 
the red region showing here. We can vary the composition of the soft and the rigid polymers such that they can achieve a certain modulus based on the rules of mixture. Next question is how to actually manufacture graded composite. Here we are using 3D printing based on multi-material 3D printing. The process involves the print head printing two different materials at different locations. At the same time, the UV light will be applied to cure the materials locally. By doing that, you can see we can basically make the patterns with unique combinations. And one thing we want to mention is that these two materials are compatible such that they have a good interface bonding. This is very important in structure applications. Our design principles involve several steps. Firstly, we have a design, design shape, and then we can use the analytical solutions to derive the width profile and the modulus profile. And as we can see, if this is the tapered profile, we can then voxelate the geometry and then using rules mixture to achieve a certain modulus grading as shown in these red curves. At each cross sections, as you can see from the cross sectional view, we can see there's a random distribution of two materials to achieve a desired longitude modulus. Now let's look at their results. Our target shape is hemispherical shapes. And initially we do this final element simulations and to show you the discretized patterns and the morphing is achieved by simply applying mechanic loading. And the experimental results shows very similar result as we expected. We cut a 2D patterns and once applied the mechanic load, it can morph into a 3D shapes. If we compare their deformed profiles in terms of the curvatures, you can see the final element predictions, analytical solutions and experiment achieve a very good agreement. The previous Patterns are random patterns. You may ask questions. Why not using aggregated patterns such that you can put some the same material together to avoid generate too many interfaces? So actually we try that. And this will actually group some of the material like rigid material together either in plan direction or out of plan directions as showing here. And now you can see the deformed profile is actually also very good. So that means we, we can at the same time using aggregated patterns to achieve that. There are more cases we can do. The first case you can see the target shape is a cone structure and then we can use our random pattern to achieve that. I template structures like a volcano shapes we can achieve that or a roof structures with a varying Gaussian curvatures. Lastly we can also achieve this using multi-materials such as three materials. This is particularly useful when two materials are not compatible then we can use an intermediate material to bond them together such that they can achieve a good bondings. And also we proceed to evaluate their load bearing capacities. It is essential to evaluate their load bearing capacities before any engineering applications. Here we use an indentation test basically to evaluate the load displacement curve. As you can see, indentation test can 
evaluate their stiffness, initial stiffness, and our final element simulations can achieve a relatively good agreement with the experiment. For the load bearing capacity, we can also vary the, the shapes from a very elliptical shapes to a hemispheric shape to a very flat shapes. And they can show very different stiffness looking at the curves. And by varying their aspect ratios, we can see the stiffness at the beginning is very stiff on the left hand side until they get quite small until reaching a plateau. So that thus means the curvatures or the aspect ratios is influencing the load bearing capacities. The question now comes to why do we use composite instead of a single material for morphing? This structures why we're using composite because it's kind of adding actual function multifunctionalities. For example, they can be used for sensing or energy storage or heat management by blending the two distinct distinct advantage of two materials or elect electromagnetic shielding interface and here we're just showing some simple case where we're using the composite materials not only for morphing but also to enhance their heat transfer properties for example before morphing you can see their heat transfer properties and these the after morphing structures as you can see from the temperature profiles with random patterns the heat the temperature profile is much uniform than the aggregated patterns and here composite materials can exhibit intermediate thermal conductivity between two extreme cases between soft and rigid polymers. And then we look at electric conductions. Again, we can compare their potential, like soft material and rigid materials are showing two extreme cases, and a random material actually showing intermediate electric conductivities. You can see the difference between before morphing, after morphing, and after morphing, you can see again there are electro potentials across the petal. If you looking at the quantitative measures, you can see the temperature profiles, and you, as you can see, soft materials are somewhere here, a rigid material is is upper bound, and the random pattern, or aggregated pattern, is sitting in between. And similarly for the electric potential as a very similar case, the sitting in between the two extreme cases. And this helps us actually achieve to blend the material such that if you have electric conductivity somewhere here, very good electric conductivities, but very low thermal conductivities. At the same time here, very good thermal conductivities, but very low electric conductivities. By blending the two materials, you can achieve something in between, but still you have the morphing ab abilities. So that's the advantage using composite instead of using single material. And there's a, a lot of potential multifunctional ab applications. For example, wind turbine blades with a morphing structure, they can improve their aerodynamic performance on self-focusing solo concentrators or wave response solo areas or solo cell, spherical radar rhythms or tensioned membrane structures. In conclusions, we have developed such structures by inverse method. This is achieved using an analytical method based on tapered beam equation. And we have achieved the graded composites based on rules mixtures, discretized voxels, and addictive manufacturing. 
and our multifunctional morphing composites can blend the distinct advantage of two different materials and combine the effective properties in the single structures. Our future works will focus on achieving self-actuation by embedding some stimuli-responsive material within the print or as addition to the printed structures. Here I'm listing some key references for your informations. And also, I want to thank my research sponsors and there's a, our code is open sources for you to play with. And thank you for your attention.